Hi, this is the continuation of a series of videos designed to give individuals information that they can use to prepare for a visit to a physician's office. The videos are designed to help ensure that the individual can ask appropriate questions of the physician and to increase the likelihood that quality care is delivered. Low back pain. Low back pain is another common complaint seen in primary care offices. In some practices, it can account for up to 10% of the office visits. The most common cause of low back pain is a minor muscle or ligament strain, but these individuals do not usually seek medical treatment for this. Most back pain that causes a patient to present to a physician's office is due to dysfunction of the joints of the spine. Another major cause of back pain is spondylosis. Spondylosis is a fancy word which means a degenerative condition that may worsen as a person grows older. It can affect any region of the spine. Spondylosis can affect the spine's intervertebral discs and facet joints. Think of spondylosis as degenerative joint disease or osteoarthritis. Lesions of the nerves of the lower spine cause sciatica. These can be a result of compression of the nerves as they leave the spine. These may occur when a disc between the vertebrae of the spine has a protrusion of its contents. One of the problems with diagnosing lower back pain is that a number of other disorders besides vertebral dysfunction and spondylosis may be the cause of lower back pain. Not considering these other possible causes can result in serious damage to the individual because the real cause of the back pain was ignored. I'll discuss one real life example. An elderly patient with a history of prostate problems suddenly began having lower back problems that over the months became progressively worse. The pain became so severe that the elderly patient could not sleep, walk, or maintain balance. The patient during this time was seen by urology multiple times, with no action being taken concerning his prostate other than continuing medications to assist urine flow because of the patient's enlarged prostate. The patient was referred to a neurosurgeon because of the ever-increasing and unrelenting back pain. Ultimately, the patient underwent back surgery to address the pain, but the back pain remained and so did the associated deficits. Ultimately, the patient was diagnosed with urinary retention as a result of his prostate problems. The patient's bladder has expanded to the size of a basketball because of the urine retention. The diagnosis led to the patient being forced to use intermittent catheters daily because of the loss of bladder function. The lower back pain resolved. The majority of the deficits resolved. Now, if things had been done right, the patient would not have lost his bladder function. The moral of this story is that lower back pain can be caused by many other disorders. So the patient should be forceful to ensure that his physicians consider all possible causes of back pain, not just vertebral dysfunction of the vertebrae and discs or arthritis as the causes. Some of the other disorders that can present as low back pain include a rupture of an abdominal aneurysm, cancer, severe infections, prostatitis, endometriosis, bowel inflammation, corda equinae compression. The corda equinae is a bundle of spinal nerves and spinal nerve rootlets of the lower spine. The compression of the spinal nerves can cause severe pain. Urinary tract infections always have to be considered. And there are other disorders which we'll go over in a later video. We will continue our discussions of low back pain in following videos. Well, I hope this helps. Have a good day.